now that we are done on the VMX side of the robot with the vision scripts and the scripts are running on boot up, we need to create the robot side of the code. And in the robot side of the code, we use a VS code. In this case, it's a specific VS code 2020 version that we are using. So let's first create the project. So we need to use the command palette here by clicking on that, or we can hit F1. We're going to search for create a new project from the WPI. I want a template, Java, and a command robot. So I need to find a place to place my project. A project name, so let's go with barcode reader. I need a team number. 1234 is the default. And I'm going to generate that project. And I want the current window. Off the bat, it will run a build to create any missing folders or files that need to be configured together. In the source folder, Java, we can see the different files for our robot. Let's start with the subsystem. We can get rid of this subsystem as we do not need the example subsystem. So we can just toss that to their cycle bin and never have to think about it again. You'll see an error pops up on the robot container. We're just going to ignore that error for now and we will address it later when we work on the robot container. So click on the subsystems folder, right click new file, and we're going to call it vision sub system dot java. We're going to add this class to the package. We're going to create the class. And this class is going to extend the subsystem base so that we have all the subsystem functionalities. Now there are three types of network table instances and files, libraries that we're going to use to communicate from the robot side to the script side that's running on the VMX. First things first is we need an instance. Going to name that object inst. And we want the default instance that is created. Now if we remember back to the vision script that we created with Watchdog that we called a table to look for the table vision. It is exactly the same on the robot side where we also are going to assign a table and that table is vision. One more thing is we're only going to use the data that comes from the barcode. We're not we're going to ignore the barcode type for now. Cuz we only really care about the data. So I'm going to create an entry that is just data. Now we need the constructor. Now I'm going to create a push button on the shuffleboard that we can use to get a new barcode. 
So when I push on that shuffleboard, it tells the VMX that, hey, I want to read a new barcode. And now the first parameter is the key, and the second parameter is the default value. Oops. Now, if you remember, back when we created the watchdog listener script, we also created an entry called read barcode. And in that entry, we checked to see if read barcode is true, that we want to call the read barcode script on the VMX side. So when we push this push button, it will end up calling read barcode to tell the system to read a new barcode. Alright, so in the print barcode method, what we have is we're assigning the entry data the value of the entry at get at barcode data, which is one of the entries we created in the watchdog listener. This is the data that's the actual data from the barcode. Then after we create the and assign the entry we're going to add that to the shuffleboard so that we can visually see it. Now we have to take the data that's in here and convert it to a string. So first thing we have the key which we're just calling barcode data and then we want to get the string value from this data. Now inside the parentheses here is just the string saying nothing was read. This is a default value in case there is an error in the read value here and it can't correctly assign it. Now in our periodic loop that we're going to override that runs once every robot cycle, we're going to call the print barcode so that when each loop of the robot it updates the value in front of us so that we understand what's going on. We'll go ahead and save and that is the vision subsystem. It is a relatively easy and simple to do subsystem. Of course you can always add more code based on the complexity of what you're doing with your vision subsystem.